thought I'd do a little video response to a video that ZZMan33 did on how he does a water change. I'm going to show you how I do a water change. I'm going to go through the equipment that I've got here, and then I'll go through the actual process of doing the water change itself. Now I know this doesn't look like a fancy Hollywood studio down here. It's actually the dungeon part of my basement, but it's a really good area for working with water. It's got a concrete floor, there's a drain only two feet away, so if I have any kind of spill, I don't have to worry about mopping it up or anything. I just let it run down the drain. I've got my year's supply of salt here. I use Instant Ocean Reef Crystals. I go through nine buckets of salt in a year. Uh, right here I have my Brute Rubbermaid containers. These are food grade containers. This one here houses the RO water. And this one here is the wastewater. In the back, there's a deep sink there. It is strictly for aquarium use. There's never been any soap used anywhere around it, and there never will be. Up on the wall, right up in back of the sink, is my RODI filter, and that's basically what I've got down here. Uh, so let's take a little bit closer look at this equipment. All right, this is the RODI filter setup that I have. I've got a booster pump here, which takes my normal well water pressure, boosts it up, and forces it through the RO filter here. It's a more efficient way of using an RO filter. You've got your pre-filter, your pre-carbon filter and a carbon filter here. And then there's a dual membrane setup. And what this does is the water that gets rejected from the first membrane gets forced through the second membrane so you have less waste water and more good RO water. Now these are 75 gallon per day filters but they have a 98 percent rejection rate. So if you're looking to buy an RO filter that's what you want to look for is something that has a high rejection rate. The higher the number the better. Uh, some of them out there the membranes are rated at 90 percent. These ones here are rated at 98 percent. And then out of there, it goes through my DI resin. This is a nice dual canister setup from the filterguys.biz. Free plugs for those guys. Uh, really good customer service, great guys to deal with. So I've got to give them the plug there. Now I use color changing resin. You can kind of see right here this sort of tan color. Uh, when it starts out, it's blue. And as it gets used up, it turns to this tan color. Now the water comes into this chamber first and then it flows into the other one. So in this canister here, when this is all tan here, and then it'll start to get tan over on this side here, I flip-flop, put new filter resin into this one here, take this one here and put it onto this side so that this side over here always has a new supply of DI resin. From here, the water goes down into the Rubbermaid containers. There's a float valve here for my RO water, so when the container gets full, it shuts the water off. Uh, there's a little pressure switch that is on the RO filter that when it senses too much pressure, it shuts the pump off and everything. I also have a, a Mag Drive 5 pump in here to keep the water circulating. And then this over here is my wastewater container. Notice I have my buckets upside down, keep the dust out of them. Same thing here, a little pump in there to keep the water recirculating. And the wastewater here, we don't throw it away. We use it for laundry or watering plants in the summertime, so nothing gets wasted. I also have this dual TDS meter. Uh, TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. It has two probes, one for the incoming water and one for the outgoing water. Just turn it on here. Give it a little time and you can see that it is reading 342 parts per million on the inside. Now, parts per million of what? We don't know. Could be phosphates, uh, minerals, iron, anything in the water. But now when we switch it over to the output side, you'll see that it is reading zero parts per million. And that's what you're looking for. If you have anything higher than zero, it normally means that your DI resin is getting exhausted or it's possible that your filter membrane on your RO filter is going bad. Well, that's it for the equipment. I know it really wasn't that exciting, but let's go through the process of doing the water change itself. 
Okay, my RO water is just about full here, so I'm going to add my salt to it. I've got a 17 on the top of my bucket here. That's to remind me that I put 17 scoops of salt for one complete batch of water. It's also nice to have the pump on the inside here for mixing the salt up. It does a really nice job. Alright, that's 17. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this water sit for about a half an hour and that's going to make sure that the salt is totally dissolved in the water and then we're going to check the salinity. Okay, our 30 minutes is up. You can see that the water is cleared up quite nicely. It's all mixed up well. Time to check the salinity. Now you can use a hydrometer, but I like to use what's called a refractometer. It's a pretty accurate way of measuring the salinity of your water. Take an eyedropper and put three small little drops right here on this glass panel. You put this down like that and then you look in through here and there's a graph on the inside. All we do is hold it up to the light, look inside, and the chart is telling me that the water is 1.025. So that's right where I want to be. If it was a little too high, we would have to add some RO water. If it was a little too low, we'd have to add a little more salt. But 1.025 is where I want to be for a reef tank. Now when we're all done with the refractor, we want to rinse off any salt water that's on it. So take some RO water, which is what I have in this jug here, and just give it a real light rinse. You'd want to do the same thing with a hydrometer too. And just let this sit out and dry before you put it away.